The difference between struggling and succeeding often starts with a single sound, and school nurses are the ones who catch it when it's missing. But screening classrooms full of kids isn't exactly a walk in the park, especially when you're juggling everything from energetic kindergartners who can't sit still to older students who would rather be anywhere else. Every age brings its own challenges, and cooperation isn't always guaranteed. In this video, we want to talk about a valuable tool that is becoming increasingly popular in school settings, otoacoustic emissions, or OAE hearing screening. As school nurses, you're experts on ear anatomy. Sounds travel through the outer ear and middle ear to the cochlea in the inner ear. What's fascinating is that a healthy inner ear doesn't just receive sound, it also produces faint sounds of its own. These sounds are called otoacoustic emissions, or OAEs. When stimulated by sound, they are generated by the active movement of the outer hair cells within the cochlea. Think of it this way. When we test for OAEs, we send a sound into the ear and then use a sensitive microphone to listen for the tiny echo or sound that comes back out from the working cochlea. This sound reflects the function of those outer hair cells, which are often affected by hearing loss. So why are OAEs gaining popularity, especially for screening children in school settings? Many school nurses may think of otoacoustic emissions as a tool used mainly for newborns or very young children, but they are increasingly recognized as a valuable screening method for children of all ages. While pure tone audiometry has long been the gold standard, it's far from perfect, especially in real-world school settings. Pure tone screening relies on a child's behavioral response. They need to listen for a sound and signal when they hear it, often by raising a hand. This can be challenging for younger children or those with developmental delays who may have trouble understanding or following instructions. Add in the reality of a noisy school environment and things get even trickier. Background noise can easily mask the test tones. Both factors, difficulty with the task and excessive ambient noise, can lead to high refer rates. These referrals don't always indicate true hearing loss, but they can cause unnecessary stress for families, place an undue burden on healthcare providers, and sometimes even result in avoidable costs. This is where OAEs offer significant advantages. OAE testing is objective. It doesn't require a behavioral response from the child. This means variables like a student's attention, cognition, language level, motivation, or even native language do not impact the OAE result. Another major benefit is speed and efficiency. OAE screening for both ears usually takes less than two minutes, often under 30 seconds per ear. That's a big time saver compared to pure tone screening, which can take four to seven minutes plus extra time for conditioning. When you've got a whole school to screen, every second counts, and OAEs help you make the most of them. Plus, OAEs can be performed reliably even with moderate background noise, making them a practical choice for busy and, let's face it, often ruckus school settings. Performing an OAE screening is straightforward. It is recommended to start with a visual check of the ear with an otoscope. Look for reasons not to screen. Fluid or drainage, occluding earwax, open sores, or a foreign object. If any are present, screening should not proceed, and the parent or guardian should be notified. Next, you want to choose a soft, disposable probe tip that is the correct size, as large as or slightly larger than the ear canal opening. Gently pull the outer ear up and back to open the canal, and insert the probe tip gently but firmly into the outer part of the ear canal, angling slightly forward and down. For foam tips, compress first. An airtight seal isn't strictly necessary, but a good fit is important for reliable results. Let go after inserting. If the tip size is correct, the probe should stay put. Don't worry about inserting too deeply. The tip covers prevent touching the eardrum. Now it's time to run the test. 
turn on the equipment and select the ear to test. The device will present sounds and listen for the OAEs. Some devices show progress, others just indicate the test is happening. The device may alert you if there's a poor probe fit or other variable interfering with the screening process, and you can adjust as needed. Once completed, the screen will typically display a clear pass or refer outcome. A pass generally means OAEs are present at a sufficient level for most tested frequencies. While a pass usually rules out a serious degree of hearing loss, it's important to remember that OAEs are not a full test of hearing. They test the cochlear response, but not the entire auditory pathway to the brain. A refer outcome means the OAEs were not detected reliably and indicate a risk for hearing loss that might hinder learning and communication. Keep in mind though, OAEs are sensitive to issues like earwax or temporary fluid in the middle ear, which can block the admission from being measured. To help rule out these variables, it's generally recommended to re-screen the student two to four weeks later. If the second screening results in another refer outcome, the student should be promptly referred to an audiologist for a comprehensive diagnostic hearing assessment. Make sure you screen both ears, ensuring the probe tip isn't blocked with wax after completing the first side. You may need to replace the tip if wax is present. When it comes to OAE screening, you have options. Many tools are available and each is designed to quickly and objectively identify hearing issues in students of all ages. But what if you need more flexibility? The Sentiero OAE Hearing Screener with Audiometry takes things a step further by combining both OAE and Pure Tone Audiometry screening in one compact device. This means you can easily adapt your screening approach to suit each student's age and cooperation level, all without switching equipment. Having a single device that performs both types of screening can be a practical and efficient choice for school health programs. It's important to remember that regulations and recommendations for hearing screening equipment and procedures can vary significantly from state to state. Always check your state's current laws and school health policies to ensure your screening practices are compliant and up to date. We've made it easy for you. Just visit the McGill School Nurse Supplies website to find your state's specific hearing screening guidelines, equipment recommendations, and protocols, all in one place. At the end of the day, OAE hearing screenings not only make your school nurse workflow more efficient, they can open doors for students who might otherwise be left unheard. Every quick objective screening you perform is a chance to catch a hearing issue early, supporting a struggling learner, and give families peace of mind. So here's to you, the professionals who listen for what others might miss. With OAE screening in your toolkit, you're helping students hear their world, and that's a sound investment in their future. Brought to you by your friends at McGill School Nurse Supplies.